Hey y'all, it is me. Uh, I had to sit here and think of my own name. <laughs> anyway, this is Stop, Drop, and Roll On. And I am checking in. I know I look real special and that's alright because y'all ain't interested in what I'm looking like. Y'all want to know what I got to say. Right? Right. So anyway, um, the reason I'm on here is because it is my turn to make a contribution to the Think On It Now uh, conglomeration. And um, what came to mind the other day was I, I told people that are on my channel know that it's me. I have some siblings. My siblings have um, children, and then the children have children. Okay, so I'm never really clear on what to call that second and third group so I call them the second pod and the third pod. Uh, my brother who is a couple of years younger than I am has a how old is that baby? Seven year old. And a couple of well it was more like a few years ago. He was about three about three and a half, almost four years old. He he came we were in there talking and I was over there for a holiday or something and he came in there and he was like pointing at me and call me he's like D -D. and I was like what is it and he was like I got a question to ask you and I'm like okay what is it what is it and he comes to me out, can you read and I just kind of busted out laughing because he asked me if I could read and I'm like yeah I can read why and um he goes the reason why I'm asking you is come with me come with me so I got up and went in there to see, you know, what he was needing. And what it was, was he plays, um, our kids play, it ain't like it's an anomaly, it's just the norm now. These video games, Xbox and Xbox 980 and all that, I don't even know. Look, let me take that back, because I don't think it's a 980. So don't be, if it's a kid looking at this, don't run in there and ask your people about no Xbox 980. I just made that number up. Because I'm not real sure of the real number, but I don't, unless they just drop something, I don't think it's a such number. But back to what I was talking about. I went in there and what had happened was the little thing had played the little game so hard that he had maxed out on the level that he was on. Now what game that was, all I know is the little thing hopping around. Now I did see that much, but I don't know what it was. Uh, but um, he was at the thing and it was a, a a box on the thing telling him what to do but he couldn't read it like I said he's a baby he, he hadn't put all the concepts for reading together yet I read what was on the box to him and then he went ahead on and took it because he knew what I was saying he just couldn't read it and so I thought that, that was just really really something else that you can know what to do but you can't comprehend what to do you know he wasn't all the parts wasn't going together and so um when he asked me that that i mean here it is three four years later and i'm still every now and again i just think about it he, he the little thing is in second grade now he can read so yes he did progress don't be concerned about him you know that he didn't he didn't connect the dots now he can do that but at that time when he asked me that i just remember a time when um like right when I got through with my my the secondary part of my education, I recalled that I had a total disdain for reading. The only things that I would read would be newspaper, Bible. That was it. It wasn't no reading for pleasure and all that kind of stuff. When I say reading for pleasure, I'm like like you know how you go to like Barnes and Nobles or Borders or something like that, and you looking for something you know else beyond those two things that I just mentioned it wasn't none of that I got totally turned off from reading and which was a total departure for me because when we were younger um that's all I did I mean I did so much reading it was ridiculous like on the way home from school like if it was a fly on the ground I'm picking up the flyer reading it if it was an insert from something on the ground oh that show was filthy but Anyway, um, I'm reading it because that's how I was just grabbing. And we got that from our mother uh, because what she would do, she would never like hand us answers to anything. 
she will always tell us, like if we ask her, well, mom, what does this mean? Or what is it? She would tell us, look it up. We had a big window, like at home and on both sides, it was these bookcases built into the wall. We had Encyclopedia Britannica and we had World Book Encyclopedia, both sets. We had all type of reference books and stuff like that. And her thing was, it's not that I don't know. It's just that once you read it for yourself, then you will have the information. What I'm finding out is that as people get older and you start talking to them within this age range, age range of the Think On and Now group, that we kind of rely upon um, word of mouth stuff, real big on the internet for those of us to get on it and kind of tool around, and real big on TV. I think what we fail to recognize is that there's a whole nother world out there with books. Um, it's a lot of information out there. Apart, the internet has its place. I, I ain't even trying to keep nobody limited like I am. And But I'm not going, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to get out of this that I'm in. But I'm just saying, you procrastinating about information, getting information, and procrastination might not be the right word, it's a hesitation, and that procrastination is something else, but hesitation about picking up books and reading, finding out stuff, becomes more the norm as you get older. I think when you younger, young, you're reading for pleasure, this preschool, before you start going to school, when you learn and you get your foundation, you just get, you know, you have a a, a really heightened, if you be, you know, heightened awareness of reading and how big the world is and all of that. You go to school, we get these textbooks, and then you kind of, I think a lot of people do what I did, where you just like shut down from it, like, ooh, I done had so many years of somebody telling me to read this chapter and write a, this on that and to do this and to do that. And so reading loses its luster. But I think that when you get to a certain age and you get all that out of the way, the best way to stay a well-rounded person, probably poor choice of words, the best way to stay a well-versed person, because you can be well-rounded in other, other ways, but well-versed person is to read. And depending on what it is you're reading, you will be surprised how much stuff, information is out there. I mean, you open up yourself to all type of worlds and, and other people's cultures and stuff. I mean, I remember I learned so much by reading The Kite Runner. And I learned so much when I read uh, Three Cups of Tea and stuff about, you know, the Middle Eastern culture. It's not that some of this stuff isn't, you know, set in a in a setting that isn't a hundred percent whatever but you will find that people are setting specific things about their cultures free and out there for you to learn through reading um even my own culture and heritage is so much books and stuff out there and other places in the world besides just your round the way place and so I think, you know, my, my thing this, this week is to just kind of get people to pick up a book. Something besides uh, a magazine or something like that. All that stuff has its place. But even if you're going to read a magazine anymore, in most magazines, there's a spot for a book or something that's coming up. And I think that it's even more important now because we have, from a technological standpoint, we are losing bookstores. Um, libraries are having issues and stuff like that. And I don't even know if, you know, if it, in a little bit, if we're going to even have books that we don't already have to hold. I, these other kids is coming up and stuff. All that might be available to them is an e-reader. So, you know, for some reason, you know, an actual handheld book with pages in it might end up going the way of the dodo. I don't know. So, you know... I wanted to uh, kind of let y'all know what I mean by, like, going beyond what you see on television. Um, I think everybody pretty much knows who Jill Scott is. 
Um, if you have HBO, which I didn't at the time when this series was out, but I did know about the series from reading um, about the uh, number one ladies detective agency. And it was a, a like a little series that was on HBO that Jill Scott was uh, Ma Ramont's Rem way. I always had to slow down and say that right. But what we don't know uh, a lot of people don't recognize and know is that that was based upon a, a series written by this gentleman, Alexander McCall Smith. This is the gentleman right here. I have read almost all of these books. I think it's 12 or 13 of them. I have about two of them that I haven't, two or three that I haven't read yet. These books calm me down. They really do. When I want to just get away and calm myself down, I can read these books and count on that. I get a cup of a red Roy Boy tea um, and read it. And you learn about inadvertently. I learned about a lot of stuff about Botswana. For a little while here, I was running around through here calling every the women Ma and all the dudes Ra. Because that's how they address male and female there. But this is something. You know, it, it's an extension of what we've been shown on the TV. Everybody, well, not everybody, but Pierre knows that, you know, I got mad respect for most deaf. He, he, he sings, he, but I really am in awe of his acting ability. If you have not seen the HBO special called um, Something the Lord Made, Check it out, okay? That's all I'm going to say is check it out. Not because most death is in it, but yeah, yeah. But really look at it because of the content, okay? And that this is for real about, uh, uh just check it out. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to give no stuff away. But I will say that whatever we do know and whatever we don't know, there is a lot of stuff out there to be learned. When we hear about John um, Hopkins, we usually think about like Ben Carson, you know, black neurosurgeon, um, you know, and, and all the, the stuff that he's done as far as advancement and also uh, moving a lot of uh, just he is. If you haven't read the book called, I think it's called The Gifted Hands. There you go. Another book. But. There are some other things about John Hopkins, the man, and the family that he came from, and how that hospital and university got set up, that you would probably not know unless you read. There's also some stuff that's probably like not so popular uh, about the way that some of the disenfranchised people got treated when they uh, attempted to access services there. Okay? Um... A book that I read a couple of years ago, it, when I read it, it was still in hardback only. My book is somewhere in Virginia, and I went and bought the book again. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. If y'all don't know what HeLa cells are, if you don't know what this lady is and the contribute contribution that her, what her contribution to the health sciences are, this is a book to pick up. You will laugh in some instances. You will be sad in some instances. You will be, how did this get by me? Um, and then you'll just see how in this day and time that things are really, really, and some stuff still backwards. I really hope that this little blurb that I'm doing will make somebody be more um, open and amicable to picking up a book for pleasure and reading. Um, again, this book right here, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, written by Rebecca Sklute, to me is a must read. It's a must read. 
And if you read the book, put some comments down below and let me know what you thought about it. If you read for pleasure, let us know, you know, what you read, why you read. If you don't read, what made you stop reading? My question is, can you read? Y'all have a good one. Toodle!